Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All 2. God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for April 19th, 2023. Here we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with the goal of pleasing the Heavenly Father, increasing our faith, and hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023. Because the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 23 reads, And this is his order, his command, his injunction that we should believe in, put our faith and trust in, and adhere to and rely on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and that we should love one another just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments, who obey his orders and follow his plan, live and continue to live, to stay and abide in him and he in them. They let Christ be a home to them, and they are the home of Christ. And by this we know and understand and have the proof that he really lives and makes his home in us by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Hallelujah. And John fifteen seven reads, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And... We know that the Holy Spirit, according to John 16, 13, in the Amplified, but when he, the Spirit of truth, the truth-giving Spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth, for he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come, that will happen in the future. Amen? Hallelujah. And the book of John, chapter 6, verse 63, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the words of life that we shall hear today, April 19th, are Psalm 111. The New Testament reading will be from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 7 verse 1 through chapter 8, verse 24. And the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 1 through chapter 6, verse 27. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, unless otherwise noted. Copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. And in the introduction today, there were readings, scripture readings from the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for All too. I pray that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and your ability to walk in those promises that you might live that abundant life that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came and died and suffered and rose that we should have in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now, and if so, I pray that you would share Jesus for All too with another and that you would subscribe. And now, Psalm 111. And it reads, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works, works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. 
5. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. 7. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Verse 10 and last. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in Jesus' name is every hero. Hallelujah. And now the New Testament reading. Continuing today in the book of 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians. Today, continuing with chapter 7. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter... Wow. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Hallelujah. And it reads... Therefore... Having these promises, beloved... Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Open your heart to us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. 3. I do not say this to condemn, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. 6. Nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Verse 7. And now, only by his coming, and not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you. When he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. 8. For even I, for even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice. Not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10. For godly sorrow produces re repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. 11. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner, what diligence it produced in you, that clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. 12. Therefore, although I wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Verse 13, Therefore we have been comforted in your comfort, and we rejoiced exceedingly more for the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For if in anything I have boasted to him about you, I am not ashamed. But as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting to Titus was found true. 15, And his affections are greater for you as he remembers the obedience of you, of you all how with fear and trembling you received him. Therefore I rejoice that I have confidence in you in everything. Chapter 8 Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in greater trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. 
Verse 3, for I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely, willingly imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. 5, and not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urge Titus that as he had begun, so he would so so he would also complete this grace in you as well. 7. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. Verse 8. I speak not by commandment, but I am not testing, but I am testing the sincerity. Pardon me. Verse 8. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. Verse 9. Verse 9. For you know the grace of For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Verse 10. And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were agreeing and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. 12. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has, and not according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened. 14. But by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, and their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. 15. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Verse 16. But thanks be to God who puts the same earnest care for you into the heart of Titus. For he not only accepted the exhortation, but being more diligent, he went to you of his own accord. And we sent him, we sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not only that, but who was also chosen by the churches to travel with us with this gift, which is administered by us to the glory of the Lord himself, and to show your ready mind. 20. Avoiding this, that anyone should blame us in this lavish gift which is administered by us, providing honorable things not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. 22. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have often proved diligent in many things, but how much more diligent because of the great confidence which we have in you. Verse 23, if anyone inquires about Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker concerning you. Or if our brethren are inquired about, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. Verse 24 and last, therefore show to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus name is every hearer and now the Old Testament reading continuing today with chapter 5 in the book of Joshua chapter 5 the book of Joshua hallelujah so it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel Two, At that time the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourselves and circumcise the sons of Israel again 
the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. Five. For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. Six. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not allow them, not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 7. Then Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place, for they were not circumcised. For they were uncircumcised, because they had not been circumcised on the way. 8. So it was, when they had finished circumcising all the people, that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. 9. Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. Verse 10. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain on the very same day. 12. Then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land, and the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. Verse 13. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? 14. So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, Why does, What does my Lord say to his servant? 15. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you, you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. Then you, This you shall do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. Five. It shall come to pass when they make a big lo when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Six. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. 7. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. 8. So it was, when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. 9. The armed men went before the priest, who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark, while the priest continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, then you shall shout. 11. So he had the ark, so he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once, then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. 12. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued 
continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. Verse 15. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. 17. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. It and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. 18. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. 19. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. 21. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. 22. But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. 24. But they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. 25. And Joshua spared Rahab, the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. 26. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who raises up the, and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. Verse 27 and last. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout all the country. Amen. And this word is already blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I pray in Jesus' name is every of us hearers. Amen. And now, Psalm 52, and it reads, Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. Selah. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. 5. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, verse 7, Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name, for it is good. Amen. And let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, O Lord. I boast in good in your goodness, O Lord, which endures forever. My tongue, in the name of Jesus Christ, constructs and works righteousness. I love good and speaking righteousness. My tongue speaks life and trustworthy words. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, will make me to live forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. He will keep me in my dwelling place. 
both here and now and in eternity because of the blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, if there is anywhere that have not made you my strength, that if I have trusted in my own abundance, in my own riches, and in my own wickedness, my own strength, if I have had lying tongues and deceitful, devouring words, I ask forgiveness by the blood of your Holy Son, Jesus. Father, I come before you to ask for mercy. If there is any way I have not brought you glory in Jesus' name. That my prayers, Father, that our prayers may be received by you, all the hearers of Jesus, for all too. Father, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, lead us away from every temptation, and deliver us from evil. Thank you, Father, that we are like green olive trees in your house, O Lord. We trust in your mercy, Father, forever and ever. We praise you forever because of the salvation of your Holy Son, Jesus, wrought for us. And in your presence, in the presence of your saints, our brethren, we wait on your name forever, for it is good. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for sending your word, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that we might be healed and delivered from every destructive thing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.